Janelle's just mentioned housing. The figures are staggering. More than 10,000 homes in the Northern Rivers were damaged. Water reached these record levels. You know about that in February and in March. 4,055 properties. 4,055 were deemed uninhabitable. There are two-storey buildings in the Lismore CDB, uh, CBD completely submerged. So now I, I went to Grantham in Queensland. I saw all of that. There's a lot of criticism of the Palaszczuk government. But the Palaszczuk government came to the party with Grantham, the mayor, good man, he's since died, Steve Jones. He, and, he worked with the government. It didn't take long. They said, no, listen, we're going to move you from here over to higher ground over there. There's a beautiful community now has been put in place. Now, if we're talking about buyback schemes, Janelle, what does that mean? It has yes. to be buyback based on pre-flood property valuations or we're going to be ripping people off. You're correct, Alan. And again, I advocated that the chief executive of the Northern Rivers Reconstruction Corporation, who's been tasked with helping us do this Build Back Better Rebuild, he made that clear in a radio interview that it would be pre-flood prices because otherwise it would be worthless. And not every house will be bought back, but there'll be people will put in their expression of interest, will assess them and see how safe it is or not safe. That will happen. I feel mm. confident that that will happen. But see, Some any buyback scheme, move. Janelle, sorry to interrupt you, but any yep. buyback scheme or land swap would have to ensure because a lot of these are in low socioeconomic areas, would have to ensure that people had enough money to pay off their debts and enough to start again. That's the guts of it, isn't it? It is the guts of it, so that we put them in a, in a situation where they're not further indebted, and that's what we'll have to yes. work through. That will take some time. But in the interim, the what I wanted to come to was the housing task force. They said we'll build pod villages. That's fine. A few pod villages, great. One's being built out near the university. Great. There's one out at Wallingbar. We don't need pod villages everywhere. A lot of people can live on their properties, particularly those in the low socioeconomic areas, but the properties they own or pay a yeah. mortgage on, give them a pod, a caravan. They can live there. They can be working yeah. on their home as well. Yeah. And that's and it well, just didn't Well, we've happen. got to find out and what then, the people want, haven't we? We've got to find out what the people want. I mean, some of these we are beautiful do. homes. Some of these are beautiful homes want. built 120 years ago. I mean, have you been They're permanently? Are you being permanently consulted on this? Not on the housing. It was under Resilience New South oh. Wales primarily, the rollout of the pod villages, etc. And I did say to them, why aren't you looking at all options? Work out who owns their property. Ask them if they want to be there. Work out who rents. Ask the people who own it, the landlord or the landlady, can they go back in a caravan and pod while you rebuild? You know, I said, just go and ask them. Ask them these things. Relatives have offered for people to put the caravan or the so-called yes. pod, the tiny home, on their property, yep. some farmers. I said, there's a range of things we could do, and that just wasn't And it hasn't done. been done. It, like, it's August. It's no, August. This, no happened in, this happened in February, and we're still waiting. I mean, Queensland announced a $350 million home buyback scheme in March. That was a month after the floods hit there. $350 million. 500 people are going to sell their houses back to the government. When will we get a response like that here? Well, I want it today and hopefully we'll start off this week. You know, we should see the report and we should have some more certainty around it, at least the clear direction where we're going. And, yes, we watched Queensland just over the border. We saw that announced and we said, you know, we want similar. And it was actually... All up, they had about $790 million because it was also retrofitting where people don't move, making it more flood resilient, um, things like that. That's what we want. It's not what we want. It's what we need. Well, 